Well, in this week's Cardiology Countdown, we'll cover three organs, the kidney, the brain, and the heart. Uh, beginning with the number three spot is a meta-analysis of the effect of intensive glycemic control over time on renal outcomes, and in particular on albuminuria. And this meta-analysis in the archives looked at uh, seven studies, 160,000 patients randomized, and found a decrease in albuminuria, uh, but little else. And so no difference had been seen previously or in this analysis of development of end-stage renal disease or a doubling of, of creatinine. And so while there is an apparent effect on reducing albuminuria, the more important endpoints, and notably cardiovascular events also in other analyses, really don't add support at this point to intensive glycemic control. At the number two spot is a paper this past week in The Lancet that looked at thrombolysis for a stroke, expanding the time window and the age categories. Um, and this was a very large study, the third international stroke trial that involved 3,000 patients. It's known that thrombolysis for patients under the age of 80 presenting within 4.5 hours of the onset of stroke have a benefit of thrombolysis. And so they studied patients above the age of 80 and included those uh, up to six hours. And so overall, they found a benefit in terms of the functional outcome using the Oxford Handicap Score of about 25% improvement. Um, overall, there was a higher rate of early intracranial hemorrhage and death, but by the end of six months, the mortality overall was similar, and so an early hazard that was uh, improved with fewer deaths uh, post that early hazard period. And thus, expanding the age criteria and uh, the time criteria for use of thrombolysis for acute stroke. And at the number one spot is the release of the 2012 ESC heart failure guidelines. This is a very nice comprehensive document um, that uh, covers initial diagnosis, all of the uh, modalities for risk stratification, has a whole section on acute heart failure, and sections devoted to systolic heart failure and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And then finally, new areas for research um, in this important area. And so I encourage you to look at the CardiSource summary of that and, and the full document. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.